on the phone we have Mitch Steven, one of the top real estate investors and coaches in the country. And we're just we're just getting to know a little bit about what he does and uh, how he's making his money down there in San Antonio, Texas. So, Mitch, what's your rate of return on these investments? Well, it's I, I think it's incalculable. I think it's infinity because I don't have any money in. I don't have any of my money in it. If I go to buy a house for thirty thousand uh, dollars and I borrow thirty two thousand is what is my rule. I usually borrow two thousand over what I need. I pay myself two thousand when I borrow because I'm borrowing from private people. <clears throat> this is not an issue at all. So. If I'm buying a house for thirty thousand, I borrow thirty-two, and then I sell it for, say, sixty-five with ten percent down, or you know, so six or seven thousand down, say seven thousand down. So I made I made I made nine thousand dollars up front, and I probably have like a four hundred and fifty dollar a month positive cash flow, of which I'm not a landlord. I have none of my money invested in this, so I don't know how you calculate a rate of return. When you don't have anything in it. As a matter of fact, I not only do I not have anything in it, I got paid fourteen thousand dollars to make the four fifty a month happen. Wow! So it's infinity in essence. It's infinity plus plus um, you know whatever plus nine thousand dollars in this example. It's <laughs> infinity plus nine thousand dollars. So so <laughs> what do you do with to, your to money? So what do you do with your money? Ah, oh, this is a great question. You're you're very astute, TJ. What do you do with your that, money? That was Greg, so, but I'll take the credit for it. <laughs> oh, Greg. Okay, I'm giving the wrong guy credit. Greg, terrific question because I'm selling these houses on real estate lien notes, and people owe me payments for a, a, a finite period of time. So this cash flow that I'm, that I'm building up with every transaction, it, it's going to expire on some day, no matter what, what house it is, if I'm using this exit strategy. All that cash flow one day will cease because they'll pay the house off or, or, or the note will just – they'll pay all their payments. That's called temporary money. If you read Jack Bosch's book, um, Forever Cash, um, there's one-time cash. There's temporary cash. That's where I'm playing in. And then there's forever cash. And so I took my temporary cash that I used to build my fortune, and I take the cash that it spends off – and I go buy forever cash, which is boat and mini storages. I buy mini storages with my money because that goes on forever. That's a rental. And that's really the only rental or landlord I want to be is a rental where people just lose their stuff if they, if they don't pay. They don't lose their house or have to move their kids to a different school district or mm-hmm. go under a bridge. They just give up their junk. And believe me, most of it's junk. Oh, I bet. Uh, unlike what you see on TV, where they're finding, uh, you know, they're, they're they're finding King King Tut's tomb at auction, right? On some of these TV shows, right? <laughs> That's not reality. The reality TV shows we watch, I know because they come to they've come to my manager and asked her to do an episode when when she was in Dallas, and and they they had to have rent you know units that they they rented. They staged the whole thing. Everybody in that deal's an actor. Every word is scripted. I mean, if, so, if I had something that you was... You think you're going to go out there and make a bunch of money in storages like these guys? Think again, because the storages that I auction, they don't have hardly anything in them. I mean, I, worth anything. I, we deal with storage units a lot, and I when people, you know, sometimes they downsize. Sometimes they're waiting in between buying one property and another property, and the stuff that makes it to storage is stuff that they probably shouldn't have kept anyway. <laughs> That's right. My favorite words in the world are, I'm just going to need this storage for three months. <laughs> and it's but, in there. It's, it's in there almost indefinitely. Yeah, like 10 years. I have, I have some people that have stored boats with me that their inspection sticker says 1973.